Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this DigitNow Full Media Recorder. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So if we look on the side here it says directly capture video from VHS, VCD, DVD, VCR, DV, camera, and save into memory card. Let me get the shrink wrap off here so it's easier to read. So here we have some inputs going into the composite input. It also has stereo audio input. It has HD out to an HD TV, has video jack to TV. It uses USB-C for power and has a micro SD card slot. Here's the product contents. We have the video grabber, power supply, HD cable, RCA cable, data cable, AV cable, memory card, and manual. So here we have the device. Pull the plastic off the front here. So we have a screen here, we have volume up, down, previous next buttons, okay. Looks like that might control a menu. Yeah, there's menu here, mode and record. Here we have the composite input with stereo, HDMI out, AV out. And here we have the port, here's the TF card or the micro SD card, and it's a four gigabyte card included. And on the bottom we have a speaker and a reset button. And these feet are rubber. Power adapter is five volts at one amp. If HDMI cable, this would be the video out, to hook it into like a TV or something. This is the RCA cables it came with and the power cable. This is a mini USB, not micro, cable. So we got this ArcSoft HD video capture software. It's a warranty, and there's the manual. So it looks like we have about 20 pages of English there. So here it says the memory card saves in AVI format. File size is 13 to 15 megabytes per minute. Any segments you record more than 1.5 hours will be divided into parts. It will have a serial number assigned. So you can connect this up to mains power, or you can plug it into USB from a computer. It says charge your video grabber for at least three minutes before turning it on. So it looks like this has a battery in it. So I'll get that plugged in so I can start charging. This talks about the inputs. Here's the operation. So you can pause and read through these. I'll be demonstrating it though. This talks about how to connect different sources to it. So to turn it on, you want to press the power button for approximately three seconds. Upon being powered up, the video grabber starts off in the video recording mode and will show the following information. So here you can change the settings. You can set the date and time. It has automatic shut off. You can set it to 15, 30, or 45 minutes, and it will only shut off if it's not recording. So to record, you press the record button. To play, you press play. You can press the middle button, the OK button, I think it is, to take a snapshot. And that says you press the record button to stop and save the recording. This talks about the play mode settings, playback, how to show recordings on a TV. So you can play this on an older TV with composite cables or using HDMI. This talks about copying it to a computer. So I assume this will probably show up like a drive. I'll check that out. And then we have some troubleshooting here. Then they talk about converting recorded files here. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to need these cables right now. So I'll put those aside. So to test this out, I have my Panasonic camcorder. This is the last traditional camcorder I ever purchased. So I'll plug that in. Now I'm going to use the cable that came with it for AV, but it looks like it came with one that would also work. So I'll plug that into the AV out. Actually, I'll get a tape in here first. And I'll plug into the AV there. It's been a very long time since I used this. Then I'll plug into the cables here. Yellow is video, red is right channel, white is left channel. And I'll plug my monitor in here too. So this is just a computer monitor. I'll turn it on with the menu button. It says digit now. Okay, so it's showing up on the monitor now. So I'll probably continue on using it on this device. I like that you can view it on the monitor. My eyes aren't getting any better. It's easier to see than a smaller screen. So let's hit menu here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So the resolution is currently VGA. Let's see what else we have. It also supports QVGA. So VGA is 640 by 480. QVGA is 320 by 240. So that's a lower resolution. Then we have date and timestamp. I'm going to turn that off. Auto off is off. Language is English. Basic input enter, sound on. I think that's every Everything for now. So go back to this screen. Let me turn my light off here. There's going to be glare. I don't see glare looking at it, but there's glare from the camera from my studio light. So I'll open up my camera now and I'll turn the camera on and I'll hit play. So I'll hit record on here. Okay, so I can see it on the screen here. So that looks like a preview. I'll press record again. And now we're recording. So I'll stop recording. I'll hit pause on my camera or stop. Okay. So now I'll hit mode. And we're back in play mode. I'll hit play here. And now we're playing the video. So I'll load this clip onto my computer and I'll splice it into this video so you can see the native capture.
Okay, so I'm at my computer. I'll plug in the capture device with the USB. I'll power it on. It says no name here. I'll open this up. I'll open up DCIM. I'll just go in here. And here we have the video file. So let's look at the specs of this. So I'm using some command line software that can look at the format. So it's encoded in H.264 at 640 by 480, 29.8 FPS. The audio is PCM, that's pulse code modulation, 44.1 Hertz, one channel. So this doesn't look like it's recording stereo, but it is a pretty good bit rate. Now I can't double click on this and open it in QuickTime on a Mac. I can use VLC, so I'll use that. And now I can watch it on my computer. So that's looking very nice. Now needless to say, this isn't going to be as sharp as an HD video, but that really isn't the goal with old videos like this. When transferring these, I want to preserve these things. These tapes might go bad, so it can be nice to convert them over to digital. You can put it on a thumb drive, and if you want to back up, you can easily copy it to another thumb drive. You can transfer them to other people. It's much more convenient than all these tapes. So that's the Digit Now Full Media Recorder. I found this really easy to use. You don't have to have a lot of skill to convert things from your legacy tapes to digital. Now I hooked this up to a video camera. You you could also hook it up to VHS. You could hook it up to a legacy gaming system. I like that it has a screen on here. If you're doing a bunch of conversions, you can have this sitting on your desk. You can glance down on occasion and see the progress. Now, if you want to do more detailed work, it has that HDMI out, which is really nice. I like that it has both options. Of course, this also has a battery in it, so you can use it cordless. And since it's powered with USB, you could actually power it with pretty much like a power brick, even if you want extended runtime on it. But if you're looking for a device to convert legacy stuff, I think this is a great option. Now, a couple things to consider is that the audio is not stereo output. It merges them into mono. That's not going to be an issue for me when I'm trying to save memories. But if that is a concern, this may not be the best option for you. But otherwise, I think it was very easy to use. I think it's going to be a great tool to have. Okay, so I did a little runtime test with this. And you can see the battery here. This is after about two and a half hours of transferring videos. So there's a little bit more battery. I could maybe get another third hour, but the SD card was filling up. So we can see the SD card here. The first two videos were about an hour and they're 1.4 and 1.2 gigabytes. The third one was about a half hour and it was 680 megabytes. And we have about 638 megabytes left. So it looks like you can get at least two or three hours out of this. Now I'm doing the 640 by 480 resolution. The smaller would give you more space on here. So I'll typically plug this in while I'm using it, but it is nice that you can use it with the battery for those situations where you don't have a plug in or just for convenience sake. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye. I'm getting them. I'm pretty close, aren't I? It's hard paddling with one hand.
close now. Huh? Too close. Yeah, I'm okay. I'll just paddle backwards here with one hand. I'm getting good at this. We'll see how good this turns out.